Right, well, we're going to start sat down this evening. So find your comfortable seat, whatever that is, whether that's on your knees or cross-legged, or maybe with your legs out in front of you, or maybe even wide. Wherever you can sit, where you can sit with your spine nice and tall, whilst you also honour the natural curves of the spine. So start by gently closing the eyes and just taking a moment to arrive in practice. Taking a moment to just notice where you're at this evening. How are you feeling? Whether you're ready for your yoga practice or whether your body's not quite settled yet. Or maybe you're thinking about the car tax or what to do for dinner. The mind always has a jumble of things it's thinking about. So just notice. And then notice where your breath is at this evening. Again, not trying to change it in any way, shape or form, just noticing. Noticing the inhales, noticing the exhales. Notice where the breath moves your body. Really notice where the breath moves your body. On the inhale, notice the bits of your body that expand and move, maybe outwards, maybe downwards, maybe up, maybe backwards. And then on the exhale, notice where your body moves. And then notice if there is any restriction around the inhale or the exhale. Any areas where the breath feels restricted or there's tightness or sensation. Then take a little scan through the body. Notice any areas that feel restricted or tight, particularly around the chest and the shoulders, because tonight's class is very much going to be about heart openers. Just recognising where you've got tight spots and where maybe you feel a little bit more loosey-goosey. And then gently flutter your eyes open. And we'll start with hugging breath. So as we inhale, we stretch our arms out to the sides, really letting the chest come forwards, reaching the hands back, really opening through the chest. And then as you exhale, curve through the shoulders, really roll the shoulders and then give yourself a hug. So inhale to really open, stretch those arms out wide, let the chest come forwards, really fill it with air. And then exhale, cross the hands the other way and give yourself a hug, rounding through those shoulders, dropping chin to chest. Inhale, really open up through the chest. This time lift the chin slightly to get the stretch into the throat as well. Fill the lungs up with air. And then exhale, cross the arms the other way, round through the shoulders, chin to chest, hug it in. Inhaling to really open, really expand that chest, raise the chin last. And then exhale, drop the chin down, round through the shoulders, pull the tummy in, give yourself a hug. Inhaling to open. And then exhaling to give yourself a hug. Really get the hands involved in the hug. Really give your shoulders a hug. Inhale to open. Exhale, cross the hands the other way to hug. Do two more. 
in time with your own breath, making the breaths as deep as you've breathed all day. And then relaxing the arms down and raising the head up once you've finished. And then we'll move into tabletop position. So come around onto your hands and your knees. <clears throat> so knees need to be directly below your hips, but hands need to be somewhere that's comfortable for you. So if you're feeling any pressure in the back of your wrists, then move your hands slightly forward so they don't have to bend so deeply. And then as you inhale, drop the belly down, drop the chest down, really expand the breath into the chest and look up. And then on an exhale, curl the, <clears throat> the spine up towards the ceiling, pull the tummy in, drop the head. So inhale as you come down, really expanding into that chest. And then exhale as the spine goes up towards the ceiling, rounding through the back, rounding through the shoulders, pulling the tummy in. Inhale as you come down. And then exhale as you go up. Inhale as you come down. And then exhale as you go up. Do three more in each direction, moving with your own breath. Do them as fast or as slow as you like. And then once you've done your three, come back to a neutral spine. Excellent. Take the hips back towards the heels and really stretch the hands forwards, allowing the forehead to come to the floor in child's pose. Keep the arms active to start with. If you're really tight in your knees, you can always put a cushion between the backs of your thighs and your calves just to give you a bit more support. And then try and touch your elbows on the floor and lift the hands behind your head. So we're really stretching into the shoulders here. Maybe squeezing the elbows either side of your head just to increase that stretch. Reaching those fingers back towards your shoulders. Take three deep breaths here. And then reach those fingers back forwards again. Raise the head, press up through tabletop. And then keeping the hips above the knees, walk the hands forward, pick the elbows to the floor and reach your chest down towards the floor. If it's in your practice and you know you can get all the way down, then let the chest come all the way to the floor, either resting on your head or resting on your chin. And take three really deep breaths here in puppy pose, really letting that heart melt down towards the floor. Then once you've done your three breaths, press into the elbows, bring your hands in closer and push back up to tabletop. Tuck the toes, press the hips up towards the ceiling, coming into our first down dog of the day. But it might be, you might have already done some yoga, who knows? <laughs> so then have a wiggle and a jiggle here. So maybe stretching your chest through towards your thighs. We want our arms to be an extension of our spine. So really try and get a straight line from the, um, the wrists all the way up to the sit bones. It's far more important to have that elasticity and a little bit of balance in the back than it is to jam your knees back and be straight. So just enjoy 
and using your bones as scaffolding to support one another, stacked on top of one another. Maybe drop one heel down to the ground, maybe drop the other heel down to the ground as you bend the opposite knee. Maybe you feel like twisting through the spine and you want to twist the hips one way, twist the hips the other way. Move wherever your body is telling you it needs a stretch. And then once you've stretched both sides, if there were two sides to your stretch, just come back into your downward facing dog. Look forwards between your hands and either step and jump your feet behind your wrists or just step your feet behind your wrists, whatever your practice says today. And then exhale into a forward fold. Take a couple of nice deep breaths here. And then as we push the ground away, roll up through the spine, stretching the arms up above the head, and then exhale the hands down through heart center. Then take the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers and stretch the arms away from you. So we've already opened up through the chest. Take a nice big inhale and try and expand that chest even further. Really feel the breath all the way up into, almost up to your collarbones as you're breathing in here. And then keeping the legs reasonably straight, take a bend if you need to, but try and keep them as straight as possible. Pivot from the hips and allow your body to come forwards, keeping that stretch in the chest. And then let gravity do its thing and let the arms come over to get a stretch through the shoulders. If, you, if it's in your practice to have your legs completely straight, just have a little micro bend, just so that we're not jamming the knees back, but find somewhere that's comfortable. Keep on breathing into the chest whilst we hold this pose and really stretch the fingers away from you. If you stretch the fingers away from you, you'll feel that that stretches into your chest more. And taking a little bend in the knees, come back up as if somebody was pulling you up by your hands. When your shoulders are above your hips, let your hands fall down and release the fingers. Good stuff. Maybe giving them a little shake. Okay, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forwards, nice big bend in the knees. Inhale, halfway lift, long back, long neck. Exhale, fold. Take the left leg back. Now you can either keep the knee up or if you are feeling a bit wobbly, then you can drop the knee down, entirely up to you. But we'll inhale our arms up into crescent lunge. From crescent lunge, take a nice big inhale, really reaching the fingers up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, drop the elbows down, really expand the breath into the chest, opening the arms into cactus. Inhale the arms up. Sorry, I'm doing it the wrong way. <laughs> Exhale the arms up, inhale into the chest. That's what we want to be doing. <laughs> so we're exhaling up and inhaling to expand the chest because it's all about heart openers. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys, I'm sorry. So exhaling up and then inhaling into the chest. Good stuff. And then float the hands down to frame the front foot really grounding down through those hands and step it back to plank. From plank, drop the knees down, drop the chest and the chin down and scoot forwards. Then bring your elbows underneath your shoulders so we come into sphinx pose. We're going to stay in sphinx for a few breaths so get really comfortable here. Maybe have a rock through the hips just to release any tension in the hips and the lower back. Just rocking the hips from side to side. Then press the feet into the mat just to engage the legs and get them nice and long. And then relax those legs back down again. Feel as though you're pulling your elbows towards your hips, even though they're not actually moving anywhere. And then stretch your chest forwards between your upper arms. So you're almost getting like an isometric stretch where 
One finger's moving backwards as the other one's moving forwards, even though that's only a mic micro movement. Hopefully you can feel some sort of stretch down the front body as you do that. Try and relax the shoulders away from the ears, even if that means you have to push the elbows into the floor a little bit stronger. And then take a couple of breaths, really focusing on filling that chest up with air. If you notice you've got any tension in the lower back, just tuck the tailbone under slightly to give yourself a bit more space in that area. And let's take one more breath here in Sphinx. And then come back down to the floor, place the hands either side or underneath your shoulders, tuck the toes, take the hips back towards the heels and press it up into downward facing dog. From here, really stretch the chest through towards the thighs. Lift the right hand up off the mat, reaching for the left ankle or somewhere on the thigh or maybe the calf, wherever it's available to you. And then stretch your chest through underneath your left armpit. Really press the mat away with the left hand and take a nice big inhale into that chest. And then exhale, release it back to downward facing dog. On your next inhale, lift up your left hand and take it through towards the right leg, holding wherever you can, thigh, calf, ankle. And then stretch the chest underneath your right armpit on this side, pressing the right hand into the mat to give you space in the shoulder. And take a nice big inhale into the chest. And then as you exhale, release it off, pressing your hand back into the mat. Either step, hop or jump forwards behind your hands. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, roll it all the way up to the top, reaching up, looking up. And then exhale, hands to heart centre. Beautiful. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Slide your hands up the backs of your legs, interlace the fingers behind you and stretch those hands away from you really stretching through the chest in your forward fold. Nice big inhale here, really expanding into the chest. And then exhale, release the hands and drop them back down to the mat. This time the right leg goes back. Either drop the knee or stay elevated, entirely up to you. And then come up into your crescent lunge. This time we'll bring the elbows in front of our face, hands together, elbows together. So we're taking our sight lines out here. So if you feel a bit wobbly, just drop the back knee. What we're going to do here is inhale as we reach the fingers up towards the sky and do a little back bend. And then we exhale back to center again. So if you're feeling unstable up here, just drop the back knee. So we'll do three of those, inhaling up, expanding the chest as much as you can and then exhaling back to neutral. Inhaling up, elbows go high, really expand the chest, exhale back, inhale up, and then exhale back. Good work. Drop the hands down either side of the front foot and step it back to plank. Take the knees down towards the mat, take the chest and the chin towards the mat and then scoop it forward into Cobra. So this time from our Cobra, we can either stay in co low Cobra, we're going to have a few breaths here. So if you want to push up to really extend through the back, then you can push up. Arms don't have to be straight, they can be anywhere from straight to bent down here. Work with where your back feels comfortable this evening. And also, your hands don't have to be directly beneath your shoulders. <clears throat> they can be a little bit further forward if that's more comfortable for you. But you want to aim for a curve that is even throughout your whole spine. If your back is pretty straight and everything's coming from your lower back and you're just jamming into like a broken L shape, that's not what we're looking for. We really want to come out of that a little bit. So if you're looking this kind of shape, 
come out of it a little bit, really stretch the chest forward so that you've got a more even curve. Good work, they were great adjustments, guys. And then just have a few breaths there. Really squeezing the back muscles to keep you in this curve, stretching the chest muscles forward. And then relax it down. Tuck the toes. Take the hips back towards the heels and sit down on your heels in child's pose for a couple of breaths. And then walking your hands in, come up to seated and take the knees out wide. We're just going to do three breaths in restorative rabbit. So normally you'd hold restorative rabbit for between three and five minutes, but we're just gonna weave it into to this flow. So with your knees nice and wide, and you can always have a cushion underneath your hips if, you, um, if you've got any pressure in your knees. Bring your elbows to the inside of your knees or as close as you can get them, and then place the hands directly down on the mat underneath. What we're trying to do here is actually inhale into the back of the chest. So as you inhale, it's the opposite to cat cow. As you inhale, you inhale into the back of the lungs and you round through the shoulders. And then as you exhale, you soften everything back down towards the mat. So as you inhale, round through the shoulders, breathing into the back of the lungs. And then as you exhale, you soften your heart down towards the mat. If it feels good, you can get your head involved in this too. So as you inhale and round through the shoulders, you drop the head. And then as you soften down towards the mat, you just let the eyes come softly forwards. So inhale into the back. We're actually going to do three more. And then exhale to soften. Inhale to round, really breathing into the back. Exhale to soften. Inhale to round. And exhale to soften. Beautiful. Then coming back up, bring the knees together, walk yourself forward and lower the hips back down onto the mat. <clears throat> so we're coming back onto our bellies. Hands come underneath the shoulders. For this one, <clears throat> we're going to peel our shoulders and our chest up off the mat, and we're going to take the hands with us as well. So we only lift as far as our back strength allows. First of all, we engage the legs. Press the toes into the mat so the knees pop off, off of the mat. So the legs are engaged. Tuck the tailbone under so we've got space in our lower back. Take a nice big inhale. And then as you exhale, peel your chest and your hands up off the mat. And then have a couple of breaths there, really pressing those toes down into the mat, really engaging through the core, relaxing the shoulders away from the ears and stretching the chest forwards. And then relax that down, one hand on top of the other, head on top of your hands and completely relax in crocodile pose. So have a couple of restorative breaths here. Then lift your head, keep your left hand on the mat. So your left elbow is on the mat, your forearm is in line with the end of your mat. Reach your right arm around towards your hip and bend the right leg up, trying to catch hold of the foot. If you can't catch hold of the foot, just reach in that general direction and squeeze the leg in as much as you can. <clears throat> A little pull in if you can, Reach the foot so that the heel is coming towards the glutes, but coming towards your bum. And then stretch the chest forwards. So have three deep breaths here. Then release that off and switch to the other side. So bring the right forearm so it's parallel with the end of the mat. 
Tuck the left leg in and reach the left arm around towards the left foot. If you can reach the heel, pull the heel in towards the bum. If you can't reach, then just reach your hands back in that general direction and squeeze the foot towards the glute. And then take three deep breaths, really stretching the, shoulder, the chest forwards. And then release that off, one hand on top of the other, forehead on top of your hands and have three deep breaths in crocodile pose. Maybe rocking the hips from side to side if that feels good. Okay, this time we're going to do locust pose. <clears throat> so locust pose, there's lots of different variations depending on what style of yoga that you do. Um, so I'm just gonna give you some choices here. Locust pose is essentially when all four limbs are off of the floor and we're trying to curve our back in an even curve as possible. So you can do that with your arms straight out like an aeroplane, lifting all four limbs up. You can also do it with your arms down by your sides, not even lifting your hands up off the mat and just pressing the hands into the mat, shoulders away from the ears. That curve is the same through our spine when we lift our legs. We can also do it with the hands pointing down towards the feet, if that feels good on your shoulders. And that's certainly more of a chest opener because it encourages our shoulders back and our chest to come forward. You can also do it with your arms above your head, but that one's much more tough and we're going to hold it for three breaths. So be careful what you wish for. <laughs> and in Bikram, they actually do it with your arms underneath your body with the palms down as though you were trying to hold onto your yoga mat. Your head stays down and they lift the feet up and the aim is to get your hips up off of your hands. So take whichever form of locust pose you fancy. I'm going to do it with my hands behind my back, reaching my fingers towards my feet because that feels best for my body. But do what feels best for yours. Sorry, I'm still not sure about that. And if you're not sure which one to do, have a practice of a couple and see which one suits you best. So, take a nice big inhale. On an exhale, tighten all of your muscles around your arms, your legs, your core, your shoulders, and then lift. And then you need to breathe within the pose. So only go as deep as you can still manage to get your breath in and out of your body. Really stretch the chest forwards and stretch the toes back. So we're really trying to elongate down the front of the body, making that curve in the spine as easy as possible and as even as possible. Maybe lift up a little bit higher and then exhale, relax it down. Put one hand on top of the other, forehead on top of hands, and have three deep breaths in crocodile pose. Okay, last one on the floor. This is a floor bow. So it's entirely up to you whether you is in your practice and you want to hold onto your feet or if it's not in your practice. But equally, sometimes even if it is in your practice, it's good to try another option because it works the body in a different way. So full floor bow, you hold onto your feet, you kick your feet back to get a rounding in the chest and then you lift your knees up looking up last. Maybe if you kick hard enough, you might roll onto the squidgy part of your belly or you might stay on your hips. It depends on the flexibility in your back. In that pose, you're kicking with your feet as much as you're pulling with your hands. So you want, again, the curve in the back to be even. If you can't reach your feet or if you want to try something a little bit different this evening, then Squeeze your heels in towards your bum as close as you can 
and stretch your hands back as far as you can. Stretch your hands back a little bit further to round through the chest and then lift the knees with the head looking up last. So it's the same kind of pose, but we're having to use a lot more muscle to hold it there. So it's a far more active stretch than allowing our flexibility to push and pull against each other. Have two more breaths here, whichever one you've chosen. And then lower back down. Release the bind if you were grabbing onto the feet. One hand on top of the other, head on top of that, and have three deep breaths here. Then once you've done your three breaths, lift up your head, tuck your toes under, press yourself back to child's pose just for maybe a second or two. And then come up onto your knees. So I'm going to give you a couple of different options here. I'm just moving further forward so it's easier to see. So depending on your practice and also on your knees, if you're really tight in your knees, then sitting like this might be really uncomfortable. So I'm gonna give you another option. We want to get the chest opening towards the ceiling in this one. So if your knees are sore, then you can come up and do camel pose, which I know you all know and love. And you can always have a cushion or a folded blanket under your knees to give yourself more um, protection. So if we're doing camel pose, our hands are coming to our lower back, fingers pointing down towards the mat. We're reaching our chest up and then we're curving our spine back. We want to keep our hips over our knees or further forward than our knees. We don't want to be back here because that's just going to put pressure on the lower spine. The spine, again, we want it to be nice and curved and even. So if you're just jamming everything back from the lower back, again, you're going to feel pressure in your lower back. So try and make sure you can feel the curve throughout the whole back. If that feels too much, or if you're more comfortable sat down here and you fancy a different variation this evening, then sit on your heels, bring your hands behind you so they're reaching the mat, and then you inhale the chest forwards, trying to scoop out the upper back as much as you can. So a similar kind of action, but actually more focused on the middle and upper back, trying to open up into those areas that sometimes get stiff. If you've got really flexible knees and you want to have a go at hero pose, then our feet need to point directly towards the back of our mats and our heels are hip width apart. We then sit down between our heels. If you cannot sit down between your heels without pain in your knees, then this pose is not for you. Do one of the others that I've already shown you. I like this pose because for me, I've got short arms in comparison to my torso. So it's easier for me to get my hands on the floor to then be able to stretch my chest up. If you're also really comfortable here, you can keep your knees together. You've got no pain in your knees and your sit bones are in direct contact with the floor. Then you can go back onto your elbows, stretching your chest up. And you might be able to even come down onto your shoulders, stretching your chest up. You want to try and have space back here and then maybe the last version is taking your arms up above your head. But listen to your body. If there is any pain in your knees whatsoever, that is not the pose for you. So take whichever pose you've chosen and take three really deep breaths into the chest. So inhale and really expand really making that curve in the back even and then exhale just release out of the pose slightly inhale to really expand into the chest and then exhale just release out of it slightly inhale to really expand and then exhale release out now if you are in hero pose very gently bring your arms down by your um, sides with your hands on your heels and use your elbows to press yourself up and then your hands to press yourself up 
If you're in seated position, then just come back up to standing. And if you're in camel, really squeeze the glutes, squeeze the tummy to come back up and then sit back down on your heels again. So we're all in the same place. Beautiful job. Okay, swing your legs out towards the side, side and round towards the top of your mat. And then come down in onto your backs. So we've still got some standing up to do, don't worry. But just because they are all very, very active poses, we're going to stretch the spine in the same way, but using slightly different grounding on the mat. So the first option is simply to do bridge. Um, and we're all going to do bridge for the first round. So really ground your feet down into the mat. Now, instead of using the front body to really extend, although the front body will be extending, we're going to be using the back muscles more to lift ourselves up off the mat. So curl the tailbone up first and then lift the spine up off the mat. Arms down by your sides, palms down. And then lift as high as you can. So lift up the chest, lift up the hips, really squeeze the inner thighs together, squeeze the glutes. And then maybe if you can, roll onto the squidgy bits of your shoulders and maybe interlace the fingers for the bind. And then if you're there, see if you can lift up a little bit higher. Really squeezing those glute muscles, squeezing those bum muscles, really squeezing the inner thigh muscles, lifting the hips up, lifting the chest up. Really inhale to expand into the chest. And then exhale, release the bind, come off of the squidgy bits of your shoulders and then slowly roll all the way back down to where you started from. Okay, next option. You can either do bridge pose as we did, exactly the same. If it's in your practice and you want to do wheel, then you can do wheel instead. And equally, <laughs> any pain in the wrists or the hands, you can always do wheel on a couple of blocks. If you're doing wheel pose, bring your hands by your ears, move yourself up onto the top of your head, and then push all the way up into wheel. If you're doing bridge pose, then gently lift your tailbone up off the floor, followed by the rest of the spine, squeezing the glutes, squeezing the inner thighs towards one another. Then maybe taking the bind, rolling onto the squishy part of your shoulders. If you're in wheel, try and get your chest as far forward as you can. So you're trying to get your chest above your wrists. Whichever pose you've chosen, take three deep breaths here. And then if you're in wheel, gradually bend your elbows to come onto the top of your head and then roll back down. If you're in bridge, slowly lower the back down, bone by bone by bone, with the tailbone coming back last. And then once you're down on the mat, just hug the knees in towards the chest. Just do a couple of circles through the hips one way and then take a couple of circles through your hips the other way. Good. Okay, time for a little bit of rocking and rolling. So rocking the feet above the head and then rolling the spine one way, giving it a little bit of a massage on the mat, rolling back and forth, using momentum, and then either come to seated and stand up, or have a go at using that momentum to come all the way over and stand up. <laughs> nice little bit of fun, yeah. Right, okay, so tops of the mats. Nice big inhale up, arms reaching above the head. Exhale, folding forward. Nice big bend in the knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step the left leg back, drop the knee. Untuck the toe. This time, inhale the arms up above the head, looking up towards the ceiling. 
And then from here, allow the hips to sink down. So the base is really strong. Your feet are really grounded. Squeeze the inner thighs towards one another. Then reach the hands back, reach the chest forward. Maybe reach the chest up towards the ceiling. Reach the hands in the back a little bit more. Nice big breath here. And then exhale, pull the tummy in. Folding forwards, hands come either side of the front foot. Good, untuck the back toe, lift it up, step it back to plank. Knees, chest, chin, or come down through Chaturanga, into Cobra, or upward facing dog. Take the hips up, come over the toes. Couple of breaths in downward facing dog. Then inhale, the left leg up behind you. Bring it forward, stepping it onto the mat, dropping the back knee. Untuck the toes, come up into your low lunge. Take the hips forwards and down, squeeze the inner thighs together, take the arms up above your head. So get comfortable in your pose first, make sure you're nice and grounded and you're nice and balanced. Then look up towards the ceiling and stretch the hands back. And then stretch the chest forward, stretch the chest up. See if you can go back a little bit deeper. Couple of breaths, hit it. And then lifting it up and bringing the hands down to frame the front foot. Tuck the back toe, step it forwards into your downward facing dog. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up to the top, reaching up, looking up. Exhale, hands back to heart centre. Good stuff. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forwards, nice big bend in the knees. Inhale, halfway lift, long back, long neck. Exhale, fold. This time the right leg goes back. Keep the left hand on the mat, but bring it to the inside edge of the front foot. And then open up into a twist. So the right hand's going up towards the ceiling. Stretch the chest forwards. So we're not trying to reach our hand any further back. The hand stays where it is. We're just trying to stretch the chest forwards. Excellent, nice big breath here. Then windmill that hand back down to the mat, frame that front foot, and then take that foot back all the way up, stretching up towards the ceiling. And I'm gonna flip our dog. So come all the way over, left hand comes up, left foot goes down, and we reach our left hand over the top of our head, reaching the hips up towards the ceiling, reaching the chest up towards the ceiling. Take a nice big inhale here, expanding the chest. And then exhale, flip your dog back the other way, stretching that toe all the way up to the ceiling. Good stuff. Drop the toe down towards the mat. Take the right foot up towards the ceiling. Bend at the knee, open the hip. And then you know what's coming next, flipping our dog. So drop that right foot down behind you. Lift the right arm up, stretch it above your head. Stretching that chest up towards the ceiling. Nice big inhale here. Then on an exhale, flip your dog back the other way, taking that right foot up towards the ceiling, nice and tall. And then swing it all the way forwards, placing it down on the mat. Really ground down through the feet, bring the right hand to the inside edge of the right foot. Open the left hand up towards the ceiling. Stretch the chest forwards, nice big breath into the chest. Then drop that left hand down. Frame the foot with the hands, bring the hips back forwards, and then step it forward to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long back, long neck. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, roll it all the way up to the top, reaching up, looking up. And then exhale, hands back to heart centre. Good stuff. One balancing pose. We've been leading up to this with everything else that we've practised this evening, dancer's pose. So if you know that you're feeling a little bit unbalanced, then feel free to practice it near a wall where you can actually either have your hand next to you on the wall or even better, reaching forward towards the wall so that if um, <clears throat> you can just place your fingers on the wall to give that a little bit of stability. If you can't reach your foot, 
then you can always use a strap or a scarf or a hand towel to put around your um, ankle and then hold onto that strap instead. What's most important here is trying to keep both hips facing forward. We're not allowing anything to wing out to the side. So <clears throat> the first thing we do is we stand up really tall. You want to be balanced with your shoulders and your hips directly above your knees and your ankles. Then we bend the right leg up, holding onto it with the right hand. For me, it's most comfortable to hold onto the inside edge of my foot. So my palm is facing outwards and I'm cupping the inside edge of my foot. I know other practitioners that find it much easier to have their palm facing in, holding onto the outside edge of their foot. So have a play around with what gives you most stability. And then once you've got there, the left arm goes directly up towards the ceiling and your gaze is directly ahead of you. The first thing you do, without moving your shoulders at all, so without tipping forwards, the first thing you do is kick your leg back. So we're getting the curve in our spine before we move forwards. So we're really kicking our leg back into our hand. Then when we can't kick any further, that's when we reach the left arm up and then we reach it forwards very, very gradually, letting the body come down, keeping the hips facing forwards, letting the shoulders spread apart from one another. Left hand is stretching forward as much as the right leg is kicking back. Maybe come a little bit deeper, really squeeze the inner thighs towards one another to keep your balance. And then very, very slowly came, come out exactly the way that you went in. Good. Then we'll do the other side. So start by really grounding down through the feet. Really having your shoulders above your hips, above your knees, above your ankles. So everything is in a nice, tall, straight line. Then bend your left heel up towards your bum and hold on to it with the left hand or put the towel the strap around and hold the strap. Then take your right arm up above your head. Really ground down again, maybe squeeze the inner thighs together before you even move. And then keeping the torso up, just kick back with your leg. So we're just making sure that we're getting the curve in our spine before we move any further forward chest is really open and then when you can't kick any further we're stretching that right arm up and away as far as we can and then we start to tilt forwards keeping the hips facing forwards keeping the gaze forwards kicking back as much as we're reaching forwards so everything's in opposition to one another really grounding down through that standing leg really breathing into that chest and then when you can't go any further, very slowly and controlled, come out the way that you went in. Really good control, guys. Well done. Okay, down onto the floor we go. <laughs> so, if you have a block to hand or a bolster or a rolled up blanket, that would be fabulous. If you don't, you can do it with your hands. I can show you how. But if you do have a block available, what we want to do is have the block lengthways on the mat. And we're going to kind of <coughs> lay our back on it in fish pose. So we're not supporting the head here. If you find it's too high on its side, you can always put it flat. What we really want to be doing is opening the chest up so we're looking for the ribs to relax down either side of the block, which is why it's easier if it's on its end because then um, we've got more space for our spine to do that. But if that's uncomfortable, then do it on your side. So laying back down over the block and then relaxing your head on the floor. If that's really uncomfortable, you can always put your head on a cushion or lower the block, as I said. Arms down by your sides. 
and just really let your whole body relax on the mat. So let the feet fall open, let the arms be really soft and just let gravity do its thing over the block. If you don't have a block to hand, like I said, you can do it on a cushion or a rolled up mat, or you can use your arms instead. So you take your fingertips just towards your bottom, you hug your elbows underneath you, and then you let the head come down at the back. So that's more of an active fish pose. But for this purposes of today's class, it would be much better if you have something that you could use to support your spine. And also, if it doesn't quite feel right where the block is, or it's, it's a little bit uncomfortable, then feel free to play around with the positioning to get it in that sweet spot of where it's really good for you. And then try and completely relax in it. This can be a really um, emotional pose to lay in because it can feel quite vulnerable. You know, our throat is completely open, our chest is completely open. But it's really, really good for your back to be able to have the strength of character to lay in this pose. It's good to compensate from too much time at a computer or a desk or too much time sat driving or on a computer or sat on a sofa. So it's really, really good to compensate for those movements where we have our shoulders quite rounded to lay here and be really completely open. So just relax back over your block. And take six really deep breaths here. And then once you've done your six deep breaths, simply roll off the block to the side and push yourself up to seated. Move the block out of the way and then we're going to lay down onto our bellies to do a twist. So this is a heart opening twist. So take your right arm straight out from your shoulder um, and lay it palm down on the mat and then pressing into your um, left hand. We take the left foot behind us and then we reach the left arm up and we reach the left arm back behind us too. You might just put your hand behind your back, which will really open up through your chest, or you might be able to reach for your other hand, it depends on how flexible your shoulders are. And then relax the head down and then once you've you're in that posture just take three really deep breaths if you're feeling like you need to increase the twist then leave the arms where you are and try and maybe release the hips back down towards the mat so the hips are facing down and the shoulders are facing up three deep breaths here and then release the hand. Bring the left hand back in front of the face. Realign the legs so you can roll back onto your tummy. And then take the left arm straight out from your shoulder. Bring the right hand underneath the right shoulder and then roll back onto the left side. Maybe take the right leg behind you to start with, lift the right arm up towards the ceiling to start with, and then maybe 
maybe drop it down behind your back to open up through the chest or maybe reach for the other hand, see if you can take a bind and then relax the head down. Really open the chest forwards, really breathe into that chest as you're stretching. And if you feel that you need more of a twist, then gradually start to try and lower the hips back down towards the mat. So the right shoulder is reaching back as the right hip is reaching back down. Then releasing that off, bringing the right hand back in front of the right face and rolling back down onto your hips. <laughs> then we'll do a quick shoulder stretch before we move into final savasana. So staying on your mat, very similar to what we just did. We take the right arm into a cactus shape this time and then roll back towards your right shoulder. Take a nice couple of deep breaths here. and then roll back onto your hips, onto your belly, and take the left arm into a cactus shape. Bring the right hand in front of your face, and then roll back towards the left arm. Three deep breaths here. and then roll the hips back onto the mat. And then either come into crocodile pose for final savasana, one hand on top of the other with the forehead on top of the palms, or you can roll over onto your back and come into two traditional savasana, whatever you fancy. Whichever you've chosen, allow your body to completely soften onto your mat. After all those stretches and weird Al Yankovic positions that we've put it in this evening, just let the body lay. Let the legs be heavy. Let the pelvis be heavy. Let the torso be heavy. The lower back, middle back, upper back. The belly, the rib cage, the chest. Everything heavy on the mat. The arms are heavy, the shoulders are heavy, the head's heavy. Everything is completely relaxed on your mat. And then just take your awareness back to you. Take your awareness back to how you're feeling whether there's any tight spots in your body, whether that's changed from the start of class. Take your awareness to your breath and how it moves your body. If you still have restrictions in the places you had when you started or whether there's a bit more space in the body. And then take your awareness to your heart. We've done a lot of heart openers this evening. But what makes your heart excited? What makes your heart swell? Now it's open to those desires live your passions and follow your dreams.
and then whenever you're ready, start to think about moving. Maybe moving a single finger or rolling the head from side to side. Maybe making bigger movements. Move your body in whatever way it craves. And then when you're ready, roll over onto your side and gradually make your way up to seated. Thank you so much for joining me on the mat this evening. And I hope to see you all again soon.